Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. Yes. We're going to see what happens when you fool around and find out with the mm -hmm. state of Florida. Uh, so Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is signing a bill ending Disney's Reedy Creek Improvement District. We've talked about this before, but now we have more details as to what is actually going to happen. Right. Well, we also know like what was going on with the fact that we had people that were speaking at the press conference and how they tied into all this. But what was funny to me was that in a complete like either power move or dick move, depending on what perspective you take. Power dick. Um, that's right, the power dick move. Uh, DeSantis did this press conference and signing at the re one of the Reedy Creek fire stations. Yeah, so <laughs> for those of you who, who haven't been keeping up with this, uh, the, the firemen, firefighters, have been uh, complaining about the lack of staff and support right. for quite a while in Disney. They're basically like, we're understaffed, we're overworked. This is why we can't get to people fast enough. And uh, yeah, so he made sure he signs it in the firehouse. I know, I thought that was hilarious. I'm gonna talk about it more in the article. Actually, I'm gonna be running this more than Neon because I actually cover this stuff all the time and he's just... I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I am so checked out from the day-to-day -day Disney that I, I really don't don't care. Literally, uh, that's my job to cover. Yeah, it is, it is her job to cover the Disney we stuff. We also so. know who is on the board that is going to be uh, overseeing this. I guess the, the point of the board mostly is to make sure that Disney pays their, was it 700 million or whatever in debts. Um, they said that the, that taxpayers are not gonna be made to pay this because they said what has actually happened with a lot of the infrastructure Disney's benefited from, they didn't pay for, but taxpayers yeah. did. Yeah, and instead they've been taking, uh, as I understand it, they've been taking like taxpayer money and putting it into advertising, right. and promotions, and you know, it's kind of like, you know, we were talking before we did the video, and I was re-watching RoboCop a couple of weeks ago, but it's it's like Disney is the OCP of Orlando. Mm -hmm. Like for those of you who don't know, corp corporation in RoboCop owns Detroit, and they basically they own the police department, they own everything. Well, it's funny because even in the one handout they gave, we're going to talk about it dissolving the corporate kingdom. Yeah, right. So I'm like, they need Gizmo Duck to be their their mascot. There you go. <laughs> So anyway, let's start talking about what, what happened. So of course you know that it passed both the House and the Senate with, the, was it H, was the, it was like House Bill 9B or whatever it was. And they got through. Don't say Mickey. Don't say Mickey, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So what it does, as we've talked about before, is it's now gonna end the Disney's Reedy Creek Improvement District and it's going to now make it a uh, Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, okay? New board overseeing it because the old board apparently wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. Um, they had the one firefighter we'll talk about in a minute talking about how they, they brag. Some of the people um, involved were bragging about how much money they saved. Meanwhile, their equipment wasn't up to standard. And we've seen we've seen instances before where you know people were complaining that the you know firefighters took forever to get to you know fire, but they're like, hey, we we don't have the manpower. Well, they had emergency situations that. and they couldn't handle it in a way that they should have handled it. And it was concerning them about public safety. Mm -hmm. And Disney was more concerned about saving money and keeping it in Disney's bank, according to these people, than they were in making sure guests were safe. I can completely believe that because that is the Disney way. Mm -hmm. um, the Disney difference. The Disney difference. They also are gonna be, uh, the new board also is in charge of making sure that Disney is taxed fairly, which we're gonna talk about in a bit too, because I've mentioned to you guys many times, yep. they keep challenging their appraisals. Yes. And um, now the new board's gonna make sure that, that they actually have to pay their fair share. Uh-oh. So, uh -oh. so yeah, they literally fooled around and found out. And he even brought up in the press conference, he started off like, you know, hey, Disney wanted to, to push into this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. now we're going to have to reexamine how much power they have because they were going to leverage their power. To tell parents what, you know, could and could not be taught at school. This right. Is a corp Again, this is regardless of where you fall on that situation, the quote unquote, don't say gay bill, regardless of where you fall on it, th this is a corporation overreaching. You know? Well, yeah, but I'm, I am going to say one thing, though, and I'm going to, to be fair, I don't necessarily think what is being done on DeSantis's end is, is right either, because basically appointed, a just like everybody thought he would, a bunch of, you know, people that he knows or Republican supporters and different things like that. So it's the same coin, different side. I, yeah, I would agree with that, because I mean, I'm, I'm of actually two minds in this situation, because I don't like the idea of the government being able to come in and just seize 
control of your property. But Disney shouldn't have had this kind of power in the first place. Especially other theme parks didn't have that. Right, right. And they basically said, I mean, DeSanta said, the other theme parks are going to be, they're going to be held to the same standards other theme parks have, you know, with the government oversight. Because it was absolute kind of bullshit that Disney got to do what they got to do for so long. They yeah. overstepped what they was what the intention yeah. was. Yeah. So um, the new board is going to be f- full of the chair of the board is Martin Garcia, who was a tamper lawyer, who was apparently a large donor to the Florida Republican Party, according to WW Magic. They talk about that. They say uh, the different people. They they're really mad about this Ziegler, this uh, Bridget Ziegler, who's a member of the Sarasota School Board. I guess she was one of the authors of the Parental Rights and Education Bill. Okay. So, you know, and I guess her husband's like some Republican. Yeah. Something. I mean, this is, this is again, what we said was the fact that, you know, DeSantis is appointing these people yeah. is kind of like, it should, I mean, should it go up for vote or something like the school board? Uh, I mean, yeah, I would think because, you know, the before it was, they were, it was elected, but people were in the area, owned land and owned property in right, the right. area, which is how most of these things are, are done. He's disappointing people. And, of course, they all have ties to him. And I don't necessarily think that's fair either. I think we need people that were, you know, maybe more politically neutral. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's my personal opinion. I think that that's how it should have been handled. It's like, fine, we're going to dissolve this or we're going to rebrand it, rename it. But to be fair, so it doesn't look like nepotism, political nepotism instead of corporate nepotism, uh, we're going to we're going to try to be fair in, in who we appoint. Right. But then yeah. it goes on on um, this Brian is it Onks Jr. And I guess he's a Pinellas County lawyer, but he had he was, he was on a board before uh, the commission redistricting committee. So he's been on committees like this, you know, before. So he mm-hmm. has some experience. OK, Ron Perry, who's the CEO of Gathering USA, which is a Christian organization. Boy, I wonder what their opinion on. I don't on know. All and this Mike is, Sasso, yeah. who's a Seminole County lawyer, who has also been on DeSantis boards previously and done stuff with DeSantis before this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, some people have experience, but some people like you know there are connections there that people are questioning. And I was kind of hoping he wouldn't do that. Um, that he wasn't going to pick people that you know would aren't so closely associated politically yeah. with. But, you know, it is what it is. And welcome to, you know, our 2023 where you're one or the other and you have to go to one extreme or the other extreme. You can't meet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing I think that's going to, you know, they're going to be up for more uh, criticism over mm-hmm. all this as well. So during the uh, the media event, they handed out this uh, handout here and it says dissolving the corporate kingdom. In 1967, the Florida legislature created the Reedy Creek Improvement District, which gifted extraordinary special privileges to a single corporation. True. Yeah. Until Governor DeSantis acted, the Walt Disney Company maintained sole control over the district. This power amounted to an unaccountable corporate kingdom. Not untrue. Mickey's Vatican. Basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Church of Mickey. Um, Florida is placing the district into state uh, receivership and beginning a new era of accountability and transparency. I do agree that something had to be done. It was, and, and for just for safety reasons, which we're going to talk about in a bit, um, they shouldn't have been allowed to, to have this autonomy as long as they have. No. You know, they shouldn't. But no, I also wonder how, how far they're going to go the other way, too. Yeah, but God, this is, this is, this is a tough one because I'm like, we got bad guys and then we got worse guys. And it's like, who do you yeah. root for? You know, because I'm not for, again, I'm not for the government seizing control of, which basically has been Disney's you know property whatever for years. But, but I don't think Disney like, should have had the 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 ridiculous amount of power they have been given up no. to this point. This should have been done much sooner. That was Florida being desperate back in the day mm-hmm. to get Disney to come move, to Florida. Come to Florida, yeah. So, and they should have had they should have had a moratorium on. It. They should have said, hey, this is going to be a ten year thing, a twenty year thing, and then we need we need to phase in. Right. And I guess my thing too is it would they would still let's, let's be honest here. They'd still have that unaccountability if if Chapek hadn't challenged DeSantis. And that's what bothers me, too, because it's not about so much as we're writing a wrong that should have been right, you know, right a long time ago. Because that was the case it would have been right a long time ago. Mm-hmm. This is because they, they tried to tell DeSantis what was what, which they didn't really have the right to do. And he's just like, you know, like you said, fool around and find out. But it should have been taken care of before this. It's, it's just, you know, it should have been done long, long ago. The fact that Disney thought they could do that. 
The fact that Disney thought they could do that just shows how much power that they had in the state. Well, according to Ron DeSantis, I guess in a book he had, Chapek came to him and was like, uh, you know, I'm being pushed to, to make a statement on this. He's like, you know, we often get pushed to make statements, but this is worse than I've ever seen. And basically it was like kind of like trying to see what he should do. Um, if that's true, you know, it's DeSantis saying that. So, you know, it's, it's his opinion, his I, word. I actually I actually can see that. Because oh, I, I think it happened, too. I'm just saying, for uh, cover our own asses. Uh, Chapek tried to stay out of it, and that's what got him in trouble. Well, she should have just stayed out of it. Yeah, he should But I guess the pressure was so immense internally, and then he overcorrected. I think yeah. it went to, like, where he, you know, he just overly went the other way. Like, he had those, 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 they had the videos where they had these people come in and give him platforms inside the company to have these big, you know... Here we're going to talk about our, our, our you know, representation and how, yeah. you know, and, and I'm like, why is that? What does that have to do with anything? You know, it was it was overly corrected. Now, the difference with with Chapek and Iger, and I've said before, is I think Iger would have been more tactful and I don't think this would have happened. I think Iger would have pushed back, but he would have been more. He would have known when to stop. Tactful. Yeah, because he, he he would have known how to give the appearance of pushing back, but know when to stop. Yeah, because he knows. I mean, he's been dealing with DeSantis, so he, right. he would. No, you know. He would know how to give the appearance of acting like, you know, they cared and they were doing something about it, but knowing when to back off. And Iger or Chapek went too far. So, but I mean, again, yes, it should have been resolved years ago. I my, I have a problem with the fact that it's, it's now just being used as a political stepping stone for further aspirations of certain people. But because um, if, if they've truly felt that they have been overreaching and they have abused this power, why did they do nothing until... Chapek tried to challenge them on an education bill. Yeah. And one um, of the people that got appointed to the board is somebody that was wrote the the bill that was challenged by Chapek. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is there's this, a major conflict of interest here. This is about, look, I'll tell you the truth. This is about positioning DeSantis for president, presidential candidate for 2024. That's what mm-hmm. this is about. It's, and that's it's, what Look what with. I did. Look what I did in Florida. I'm going to do this, but... All over the place. And as, as someone being fair, and I'm, I'm just trying to look at this, and, and like, and from somebody, you know, I'm not trying to take either side politically. I'm just trying to look at the situation. I think that's a problem because, you know, I agree that something should have been done and needed to be done. But I think it should have been done years ago and not just when it, you, you got pushed into that position because you're trying to, you know, you know, you have to run, I'm going to show you. Yeah. You know, and now yeah. I'm going to leverage this and put my, you know, people on the board who were directly, you know, involved in the situation and stuff like that. I think that... There were better ways to handle this, and it should have been handled much sooner than now, and they're only handling it. They're only doing anything about it because they're trying to make an example. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. And, and and so make no mistakes. It, this should have been fixed. People, I can tell you right now, and we're going to talk about that. The the firefighters union has been complaining about this situation for years, yeah. and nobody did a damn thing. Until Bob Chapek said something against DeSantis. And then they finally fixed the situation. Because they were all more than happy to leave it as it was for years. So I am going to point that out. Because that is the truth. And you might get pissed at me. I don't care. That is that is where it's at. I covered this for years. So the things they're going to do is um, they're going to end Disney's self-governing status. Should have been done years ago. And Disney's exemption from the Florida Building Code and Florida Fire Prevention Code. Why the hell do they have an exemption to begin with? Boy, doesn't that make you feel safe? You go to the Disney uh, Disney theme park or Disney hotel, and they have an exemption from the Florida Building Code and the Fire Prevention Code. Right, and wow. Disney's exemption from state regulatory reviews and approvals. Again, why did it go this long? Why did it take Chapek sticking his foot in the mouth with the Santas for them to even do anything about this? Because money. Yes. Yeah. Ends Disney's secrecy by ensuring transparency. What? Again, why is taking the twenty twenty three? And ensures that Disney will pay its fair share of taxes. Say it with me. Why did it take till now? That is a damn good question. Prevents yeah. leftist local governments from using the situation to raise local taxes. Okay. You're supposed to be putting this out. You're supposed to be saying that you're doing this because you're doing it for the greater, greater good of Florida. And it's, you know, it's, it's this, put Disney in its place. And then you put leftist local governments. It should just say prevents local governments from using the situation to raise local taxes. Yeah. I mean, they're just using it. They're just doing the exact same thing they're mad about, but they're doing it on the other side. Same coin, different side. And that's what the problem with. I would have, I just wish they would have been, you know, they would have tried to at least look like they're trying to be neutral about it. You would think that more left wingers would be on board with this because, you know, Disney is a corporate entity that is massively taking advantage I of. I think most people situation. are on board with yeah. it. They're just mad because if they had left the leftist word out of here, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You're doing that. You're just, you, that point, you're just, you know, you're just making yourself look like you're doing the exact same thing you're mad about. Okay. Um, you had a point without using this leftist. Florida law imposes Florida law so that Disney is no longer given preferential treatment. Again, why did it take this long? Yeah, right. Um, ensures that Disney's municipal debt will be paid by Disney, not Florida taxpayers, which was a big concern people had. Mm -hmm. So they, they took care of that. But I'm just like, look, you know, I agree with almost all of this, but I don't, th there was no need to put that in there. I mean, now you're just, you're just causing more division that doesn't necessarily need to be there at that point. Well, yeah. And that's what this is, has become, unfortunately, is a yes, exactly. pissing match. You know, it is. But I mean, the truth is Disney had way too much power. Uh, I, I think it, they should have had a plan for this when they, they gave Disney this power and said, look, we'll let right. you do this for 10 or 20 years to get started. And then we need to renegotiate the deal. Well, people it's, probably yeah. back then didn't think that it would go this far. No. You know, that no. it would it would have gotten as far as it got. Well, think about Disney back then, what they were then versus what they are now. Back then it was like, oh, they make cartoons and theme parks. You know, right. You weren't going to expect this. You yeah, know? not a big deal. Now they're like the biggest you know, entertainment conglomerate on the planet. Well, they didn't like, have SeaWorld and, and Universal then either. So they no. probably just figured this would be a way to streamline to get things put through faster. Yes, so that they, yes. and the Disney, and to, at the back then, we're responsible for ourselves. You don't have to worry about us. It would look very appealing. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it was theme park. It wasn't supposed to be like, hey, we're going to, you know, weigh in on Florida state law. You know? Yeah, yeah they never could have imagined that that's, that's where things were going to go back then. And they, like, again, they were so desperate to get Disney to come to Florida that the did whatever they had to do to get, right. you know, Walt Disney says, Hey, I want to build, I want to build a city in Florida. And they're like, hot damn. Let's yeah. Get, let's and if get, we let them have autonomy, yeah. they could just do it faster. And we don't yes. have to be the ones that have to micromanage everything. And, and, and then we don't have to pay for all their shit. They'll pay for it themselves. Yeah. We much. just have to give them, you know, infrastructure on the way in. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I can understand why they did it, but I don't think they ever thought Disney would take it as far as they have. No. Um, the Disney company. So I wanted to point out down here. So they're talking during the press conference uh, about it. And uh, they said that they wanted to ensure that people, that the, the theme parks all received the same treatment. Um, they, he thanked, DeSantis thanked John Shirey, uh, the president of Reedy Creek Firefighters Union. And it, the, he got a chance to talk. And that's what we're going to, we were talking about earlier. I knew the name immediately because I've covered this for a long time. Mm. And I know for a fact that he has gone out, Shire has gone out multiple times to the media, usually the West of ESH, and tried to get attention on the problem that firefighters have been calling out for a long time. They are under understaffed. Their equipment is is in disrepair. They don't have enough equipment. They, that way they don't have enough uh, coverage. A lot of times they have to call in outside um, firefighters or, you know, um, emergency personnel to help them because they just don't have what they need. And they were actually, they were responding to um, accidents and SUVs because they didn't have vehicles. This is not new. He's been complaining about this for years and I've covered it every time because I was like, this is a problem and it's a concern as somebody who, you know, goes to Disney and I can't imagine how concerned these people are. Oh yeah. Cause I mean, it's, it's their ass on the line. Well, they, basically. they said and the one person, you know, one woman died and they said they couldn't get to her fast enough. So um, here's what he had said previously. Okay. On a normal day, we would have four fire engines and eight ambulances running all of the calls that service the entire Disney property. The Disney four, property is huge. So all of Disney, which is the size of San Francisco, has four fire engines and eight ambulances. Correct. That's, that's it. Yes. And then Shire brought up in the call or the, the press conference today that the one person that was overseeing their budget was bragging how you saved 30 billion. Okay. <laughs> right now we have only two of our fire engines in service. So two, two fire engines for, again, a property that is approximately the size of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Okay. One tower truck. And then we have another crew that's running out of our heavy rescue, which does not have fire funding equipment on there. We've had multiple situations because of how poorly maintained our fleet of vehicles is. Where an, there's an ambulance, where, the, where an ambulance will break down en route to critical calls. The ambulance is breaking down when they're trying to save people. Okay. This is the Disney difference. They're, these are the guests that are, you're, they're paying there to be protected. They can't even get to you. And, and how much are those hotels every night? <laughs> right, right. Which I'm going to bring up in a bit too about right. that. They, this is the one I was talking about the woman. We had a cardiac arrest call where the responding rescue broke down. And then we had to send a separate rescue to go in and fill in for them. 
We had an incident where one of our own firefighters got injured on the job and had to be transported, and the vehicle broke down en route to the hospital with him in it. Oh so it's God. a major safety concern for us. And the one cardiac call I know they were upset about, and I'm pretty sure that's what he was referring to. I'm not 100% sure, though, was the woman did pass away because they couldn't get to her. If they had gotten to her sooner, she might have been okay, but they couldn't get to her because the vehicles weren't working. Now, that, the, the, like I said, I knew immediately when he said this person's name. This person has been out in the media. He has gone against Disney. He has gone against the people, the, the board that ever saw him. And his, 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 you know, superiors multiple times trying to get help for the um, Reedy Creek Fire and Rescue. That, I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine that? Like, we're doing our job, we're trying to do our jobs, and this is one of the most prosperous company. well, at the time, you know, for years, uh, companies on the freaking planet and and they can't even spring for a new fire truck. And they're charging how much people to stay on property, right, how right. much people to go to the parks. They, they they leverage the Disney brand, you know, to charge you more, but they can't even, you know, maintain the vehicles to make sure that you're safe if something happens. And how safe do you feel if you're you're going to a hotel and something happens? I mean, there's a ch- two fire trucks and what, eight ambulances. So you better hope that seven other people don't have to go to the hospital at the same time you do, or you're not going mm-hmm. to the hospital. Now, like I said, so. a lot of times they do call in outside, you know, services yeah, from Orange the, you County know, or, yeah, yeah, they yeah. do. But it depends. But then the, the problem with that is they have to be available to come help. Yeah. Or it's taking away services from the other places that the taxpayers are paying for to, you know, send them to Disney to cover what Disney won't pay for. Okay. So you have that situation going on. So I thought it was very interesting they had him speak. And as soon as they said his name, I knew exactly who he was. Okay. Because I've covered this many times um, to get the word out because I thought it was absolute bullshit that they had to deal with this in the first place. Um, something else I want to point out, we're going back to what the board's going to handle. The, the new board, one of the things that they have them handling is Disney property taxes are going to be reassessed to ensure Disney is paying its fair share. Why is this relevant? Because if we've talked about Many, many times. And you can attest. Mm -hmm. Disney has weaseled their way out of paying their fair share of assessments for how long? Oh, years. Yeah, they've they've tried to argue that their hotels are worth more than other because of the the Disney brand. Yeah, but, but that when they charge you, yeah. when they charge you for staying in the hotel, you pay more because it's Disney brand, right? Right, but then they won't pay the taxes. They got they that. got the entire. They disputed. I have the articles right here. Um, they had gone up against because they were mad a couple of years of 2020 in court about the appraisal of the Yacht Beach Club. So they literally went to the place where, as far as they questioned the Rushmore method, and then they got it made and they said it's not legal in Florida. And the courts agreed because it took their brand into consideration. Now the brand that you they you can't they can't pay taxes for, but they can upcharge you ridiculous amounts of money for it because it's a Disney brand. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if this has any impact on the price of the hotels at Disney because Universal doesn't charge that much. The Good Neighbor Hotels in Disney Springs don't Mm -hmm. charge that much. You know, and in a lot of cases, the hotels are much, much nicer for a lot less money. Well, here's an article. This is one of many. I have several of these on Pirates and Princesses where they have been suing. This is 2021. I know they did it again recently that they're suing because they're trying to argue that they're overappraised on what their property, the properties are. They're, they're suing for the property value of the parks. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, they're raising prices of tickets. They charge you ridiculous amounts of money for hotels because that you're paying for the Disney, the Disney brand, the Disney magic, Disney, Disney, Disney. And that Disney name, th- that means more. It's behind the man, guys. It means more. So you pay more. Except when they have to pay taxes, then it should not be rolled into the value because Disney, the Disney brand only is used when it benefits Disney to make money. Yeah. Yep. The rest of you fuck off. So it's interesting. So this is what's going to happen. Now, what are your takeaways? Uh, my takeaway is I think Disney let this go so easily because I think they're cash strapped right now and they don't have the money to maintain the firefighters and the, mm-hmm. you know, all, all that. Um, and for them, I think in some way, even though it got weirdly political, I think it's also a relief because I don't think they want to foot that bill. They've just been footing it for so long and they don't want to lose control either. So now they can say, oh, mean Mr. DeSantis took it from us. Well, well what are we going to do, guys? Can't fight the government. 
Oh, but well, they're going to be like, I think they're going to be like, too. Well, there's someone to blame now. Like, yes, before, when yes. it was themselves, they, only, they could be blamed. But now, if something happens, rides are shut down, or, oh, it's because of the, we have to follow these new guidelines. If, uh, yeah. You can't get it done as fast. Right? So now they'll be like, now they'll be like, oh, you can blame Ron DeSantis if, if uh, somebody dies at Disney. It's his fault now. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it, I think, I think they're going to use it to, you know, make excuses. But I don't think it ever should have gotten to the point where it is now. It should never, they should never have had the special district this long. No. But I don't believe that it's, it, I, I, the timing is what bothers me. It's like, why was nothing done until it could be used for a political stepping stone? It should have been handled years ago. Yeah, it should I, never got to this point. I, I agree. I agree with that. I think it was just that that's the way it's always been. And nobody really thought to question and again you know disney could hide or disney was able to pay people off they were able to pay people i mean off you know we're i'm making that assumption i don't know for a fact right I mean, right and now really. i just think they're like yeah it's not really worth it so yeah we'll just blame desantis and right because they left it go up like they didn't even fight it they didn't we can't wait to work with the florida government and they gave up way too easy yes they're uh, like oh probably like oh thank god we don't have to keep the damn fire engines going yeah they can you they know? can pay for all the stuff and we still benefit and then the way yeah. disney pretty much yeah. is still benefiting for everything yeah just that now this board's gonna oversee it i do have an issue with the board and the fact that it just seems like it's the same quite different sides instead of disney putting all their people on the board to get what they want it's now the sand is putting all his people on the board to get what results he wants and i think they should have it should be like a mixed board it should it should meet in the middle somewhere and um i don't like the fact that it really doesn't yeah no i i would agree with that but uh we'll, we'll see how it goes i mean it's i i don't think that consumers or that the disney guests are going to see much of a change um no you're not but disney is yeah yeah and that that's gonna be interesting to see if it affects them you know next fiscal year like, oh my God, guys, we had to pay so much more in taxes than we ever had to. You know. I, I always wonder how much they spent in court to <laughs> try to get out of taxes. It would have been just probably cheaper and easier just to pay the damn taxes. Not always. Not always. Sometimes, you know, I don't know. We're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.